It's Friday afternoon, the day before. The Alabama State Hornet football team has just arrived in West Virginia. As they get on the team bus, they observe some of the outdoor lifestyle in the state. Beautiful small waterfalls on one end, trees and big mountains on the other end, along with this big ass bridge. As the team got to the hotel, they then went to the stadium to do walk arounds one last time in preparation for the game on Saturday. Morgantown, West Virginia is the scene for the season opener. We come up here against a Big East team, the West Virginia Mountaineers. A team that's looking to make a come up in the mid 2000s. A team that's looking to make some noise in the pow- in the college football world. The Alabama State Hornets now have the opportunity to prove that they can play on the big stage with the big dogs. Can the Hornets come into Morgantown and come out with a big victory against the Mountaineers? Season 3 begins today. And this should be an interesting matchup despite the fact that West Virginia clearly has the edge. I'm Brad Nessler, here along with two of the best commentators in the game, Kirk Herbstreet and Lee Corso. The players will have to battle the rain in today's contest between the Alabama State Hornets and the West Virginia Mountaineers. The college football season continues, and i got to tell you, Lee and Kirk, I am ready for this game. And here come the Mountaineers. The Mountaineers come into this game expecting a win. I tend to agree with that. How about you, Herbie? West Virginia is led offensively by their quarterback. And he's the number one reason why I'm picking them to win this game. I look for him to spread this defense out and attack them from every direction. Big game today by the quarterback. Okay, you ready for my pick? West Virginia will win this football game. Well, Coach. So as you saw, Eric Webb is the impact quarterback for the West Virginia Mountaineers. And then on defense, they have a left outside linebacker by the name of Cedric Thomas, 6'2", 240. We're going to be on the lookout for him throughout this entire game. Last but not least, we have a new impact player on defense, and that is Jason Moore. Season three is underway. We're at the number 10 toughest place to play, and there goes Kyle Gray taking the first snap of the season to the right side and going out of bounds at the Hornet 34. Then we give the ball to Justin Chambers. He breaks away from defenders and most of his way near that first down marker. The run game is going smooth so far as we continue to hand the ball to Chambers. He goes nowhere, so now we got third and two. This time, though, Justin Chambers takes it outside, gets into Mountaineer territory for the first down. Ball at the 49, we do the speed option. The pitch to Justin Chambers. The man all the way from VA gets tackled back at the 30-yard line. Here goes Newton for his first time in the game. And I don't know who he was looking for on that play, but that was not a good pass. So here we go again on third and eight. Newton stepping back the passes. He's looking for Tim Brown, who makes the catch. And then he fumbles the ball. It's recovered by West Virginia. Wait a minute. Let's look at this again. How was that a fumble? How was that a fumble? He didn't even make a play on the ball. All he did was catch it in midair. Ridiculous. Come on, bro. So here we go. West Virginia's on offense. There goes the play action. He's looking for Porter. Porter makes the catch and then taken down by Jason Moore. At the 46. Here you go again. Play action. Webb looking for Heath. Heath makes the catch on Jason Moore. Jason Moore's been tested early in this game so far. At the 35. Here goes Webb again. This time he's looking over the middle and that pass is dropped. We catch a break right there. Second and 10. Eric Webb. He finds Porter. A bad angle by Sisk. And Porter goes into the end zone for the first touchdown of the season for West Virginia. 
A bad angle there by Josh Sisk, our new starting free safety, and we pay the price. But then here goes Cal Gray taking the option once again up the left sideline, making a man miss and tackled at the Mountaineer 40 yard line. We needed that badly. So first and 10, the direct snap to Justin Chambers, and the man all the way from VA gets to the 25. First and 10 again, Newton. Stepping back and pops it. He fires the true freshman Tim Brown at the two yard line. Big play there for the big true freshman wide receiver. Glad that he's on our team. At the two yard line, we got Kyle Gray at the, with the bad snap, but he takes it into the end zone for the first touchdown of the season for Alabama. We're tied at seven, and the West Virginia Mountaineers are going to be looking to break that. So here goes Webb. He finds Porter. Porter is tackled by Josh Sisk. Sisk couldn't get there fast enough. So here we go, we get another play action. Eric Webb looking deep. This time is badly overthrown. Second and 10. Here goes the draw play to Roth. Roth up the gut untouched and then he's taken down by Josh Sisk at midfield. Webb, once again feeling the pressure. He finds Heath. He's stripped by Jason Moore. Kyle Gray can't recover it. And Porter goes into the end zone for his second touchdown of the game. We can't catch a break. What a sequence of events. The pass by Eric Webb. The catch by Heath. The strip by Jason Moore. Cal Gray couldn't recover it. And Jason Porter picks it up and goes into the end zone untouched. Why does this always happen to us? Unbelievable. Now we got to regroup on offense and see what we can do. But the first quarter comes to an end. It's 14 to 7, West Virginia. Here we go, second quarter, we're on the 36. Bobby Newton goes down. Tackled by Jones from the strong safety spot. So then we have to punt the ball back to West Virginia. And once again, our special teams let us down. So now West Virginia has good field position. But this time, big Corey Johnson gets rocked in the backfield for a two-yard loss. Second and 12. He feels a piss, and that should have been picked off by Jason Moore. Third and 12. Webb. All day to pass. And then he's finally brought down by Mike Katsadan. The walk-on sophomore defensive end is back. He gets his first sack of this new season. So we get the ball back. It's first and 10, and Kyle Gray tries to get to the outside on the option, but then he's taken down. So then we're on second and 15. We're looking deep for the Ohio State Buckeye transfer, and he drops the ball. Kevin Scott, come on. Newton. Looking for Tim Brown. Tim Brown drops it. Two consecutive drops on that drive. So then we have to kick the ball back to West Virginia. And there goes Heath waiting for it. Fields it. Goes up the right sideline and he's gone. And West Virginia take a 14 point lead. We're in some trouble now. We're in big trouble right now. We're down 21 to 7. As the West Virginia Mountaineers are beginning to pick up momentum, Heath with a big play there. So now we have to score before the half is over. Kyle Gray takes the snap on the speed option. He goes up the right sideline and then he goes out of bounds. Oh, he knocked over the coach. Newton stepping back to pass. He finds Tim Brown making an absolute amazing catch. And then Kareem Harvey goes down with a shoulder injury, and he's going to be out for the next two weeks. So then we go back to the man all the way from VA. Look at him muscling his way past midfield near that first down marker. So since uh, Kareem Harvey will be out for two weeks, we had to burn the red shirt of Corey Brown. So once we did, well, take that back, Brandon Ross. So once we decided to do that, we get back to gameplay. And Kenny Gadsden picks up the first down on third down. First and 10. The left guard is moving. I believe that's Corey Brown. And it pushes us back five yards. So first and 15. Newton stepping back to pass. He's looking for Tim Brown. Up oh, no, that's Kevin Scott making his first catch as a Hornet. The Ohio State Buckeye transfer makes his first catch as a Hornet. And then there goes Justin Chambers in the flat. And he finally taken down. Past the first down marker at the 11. 35 seconds. We give the ball to the man all the way from VA. He makes a man miss and goes into Super Saiyan mode. And then he's tackled at the two-yard line. Second and one. We have to score before the half is over. 
Justin Chambers picks up the first down. Four seconds to go. We let the clock run out. Touchdown, Alabama State. 21-14. Justin Chambers gets into the end zone for the first time this season. The first half ends and we're on the trail by seven. Second half. West Virginia comes out swinging. He's looking deep for Heath, and he makes the catch on Jason Moore. They've really been trying Jason Moore all game so far. We got to get a stop on defense. We got to get a stop in the secondary. We're up in the shotgun. as a draw play, and he gets blasted by Corey Johnson. The true freshman defensive tackle on a big hit right there. Second and 11. Draw play again. This time, Colin Robinson takes him down. The defense is on it right now, third and seven. The direct snap, the rough. Colin Robinson takes him down. We're back on offense. There goes the snap. It's an option play. Justin Chambers picks up the pitch off the bounce. He spins out of a tackle and then gets tackled at the 25. The man all the way from VA making his presence known in Morgantown, West Virginia. There he goes again and tries to make a man miss, but he's short of the first down marker. Second and two. We're going back to Chambers. First down for the Hornets. We're going to stick with the run game until we can't no more. Oh, wait, here here goes Newton making a pass. And Jason White hauls it in. Great catch there. We needed that. Bobby Newton stepping back. He's looking for Kevin Scott, and he drops it again. Another drop for Kevin Scott. So we go back to the direct snap. Justin Chambers makes a man miss and gets tackled near the first down marker. Oh, we did get the first down. So here we go again. Bobby Newton. He gets hit and is picked off by Franklin, the middle linebacker. He fumbles the ball and the Nobles jumps on it for West Virginia. Once again, we cannot catch a break. So the Mountaineers are back on offense. Look at Calgary coming off the edge and he gets the whip and then he is injured. So here comes Pat White, the man from Daphne, Alabama. He was drafted by the Miami Dolphins in 2009 in the fourth round, I believe it was. Played with a couple of teams in Canada. Then played with Washington for a year. And then he started his coaching career. I know recently he was the head coach. He was the quarterback coach at Alcorn State. And then he became the running back coach at South Florida. I don't know where he is now, though. I don't know if he's still down there or not. So Pat White was looking for Adams on that wide receiver screen, but that was shut down by Cedric McNeil. Horn is back on offense. Newton looking deep for Kevin Scott, and then he drops it. He dropped another pass. So we're going back with the run game. The man all the way from VA, making a man miss. Then he makes another man miss, and then he powers his way near that 40-yard line marker. What a run. Play action. Newton. Looking deep again for Kevin Scott. This time he makes the catch and then he gets tackled inside the 15. And then he gets injured. We need to work on this. We have too many injury prone players on this team. Our strength and conditioning coach needs to get it together. And then the high snap that Kyle Gray. It's an option play. He makes up for it and it gets tackled around the five yard line. As the third quarter comes to an end, it's still 21-14 Mountaineers. But the Hornets are driving. It's third and four. Calgary takes the option. He's looking for the corner. He's got it. Touchdown, Alabama State. We finally tie the game at 14. We need to play some defense. Get the ball back. We win the game. Simple as that. West Virginia calls a draw play for Roth. And then he gets tackled by Jamal Sykes. There goes another... Play action. This time, Pat White keeps it and taken down by Cal Gray on 33. It's an off tackle hand off the Roth. Roth has the left side. He makes a man miss. 40, 35, and then he gets tackled down by Jason Moore. That was a big run there by Roth. Here goes West Virginia again. Pat White makes a man miss. He looked downfield, and then that pass is dropped by Heath. So, second and 10. It's an option play. Pat White takes it outside. He falls Blake Rollins and gets inside the 10. Tackled at the 5. Oh no. First and goal. He makes two men miss this time. And he goes into the end zone. Touchdown. West Virginia take the lead back. West Virginia take the lead back. So now we have to go down field and tie the game once again. Justin Chambers take it down right there by Franklin. This time, Bobby Newton stepping back to pass. He's looking for White, but that pass is badly thrown. 39. This time, Kyle Gray sees something on the right side. 
He takes the step. It goes up the right side. And then he gets taken down short of the first down marker. And now he's injured with the leg injury. And he's out for one week. So then the handoff to Adams, the fullback. And he gets the first down. First and ten. Here goes Newton once again. He's looking for Kevin Scott. And that pass was just badly thrown. Second and ten. Direct snap to Justin Chambers. The man all the way for VA gets the first down marker and then goes out of bounds. First and ten. Play action. Newton looking deep for Jason White. And he drops it. Another drop for this Hornet offense. Newton. This time he's looking for Kevin Scott and he drops it. Our receivers have left their hands in the gut town. Justin Chambers breaking a tackle. Tackle at midfield is fourth and seven. This is the game. Bobby Newton looking for Tim Brown. Who makes the catch? The true freshman comes through. What a catch by Tim Brown. First and ten, we still have light. Newton looking for Chambers in the flat, and he dropped it. No, if that was Tim Brown, the man that just made the big catch. So now we go to Justin Chambers. This time he's tackled in the backfield for a four-yard loss. It's third and four. We might have dug our grave with that play. There goes Chambers again. This time he's tackled once again. So now we have fourth down. The game's on the line right here. We don't win it. We don't get it here. It's over. The snap. Newton stepping back. He's looking for Jason White. He dropped it. He dropped it. And that's how the game ends. We lose 28 to 21. We dropped at least six, seven passes, at least four on that last drive. Absolutely horrible way to end the game. But we did see promise with this football team. But we really have to get it together if we're talking about competing with these big time schools. Bobby Newton didn't play a great game. He was eight or 21, made some bad passes. Justin Chambers doing what Justin Chambers does along with Cal Gray. But the the story of this game was no doubt the wide receivers. They dropped too many passes in this game. That's a total of seven drops. This was a good game though. I did get to see where we're at. I do see some promise with this team. But the receivers got to get it together. Join us next time for the next episode of The Sting. Peace.